Hello, 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 everybody. It is I, J Malls of J Malls Gaming. And today, I got an iced coffee in my left hand, a mouse in my right, and a script in front of me. Let's talk about video games. And today, I want to talk about something we are all familiar with, especially if you're a fan of RPGs. Hmm. <clears throat> Some good iced coffee. You ever played a game and thinking nothing happens for the first five or seven hours, or it's just all cutscenes, or the main flow of the game doesn't really start till after you do this like arbitrary section at the very beginning? The infamous slow start. We all know it. We all either love him or hate him. And it seems like so many games that are long form in some way take for ever to really get going. Honestly, the ones that come to my mind, like, right off the top of the my head, are games like Persona 5, really any Persona, Xenoblade 1 and 2, and arguably Final Fantasy 14. And people criticize slow starts all the freaking time, saying the game should constantly be great, and I think there is an argument to be had there. After all, if you swap the slow start with a later, more exciting part, You'd rightfully criticize a slower, less interesting section, so long as it is less interesting. But since that bit is at the start, for a lot of games, people seemingly give it a pass for some reason. Many times, if you criticize a game's slow start, you'll just be met with a litany of responses that all boil down to, it gets better, or just keep at it. But why justify it? Well, I don't think it's a clear and cut issue, because honestly... I don't personally mind a slow start. Well, to be honest, it kind of depends. I don't mind a slow start if it's still engaging and serves to introduce me to the world, the characters, and the game itself. Let's take, say, Persona 5, for instance. To get into the core game loop, it requires like five or seven hours of mainly visual novel action to actually get there, to get to the main flow of the game. But the story is compelling. In, the, in those opening hours. It shows and introduces you to the rules of the game's world and sets up future story. It's a slow introduction, sure, but it's well paced and compelling and it serves its purposes. I think P5 is an excellent example to my next point. The introduction only has to be as compelling as it needs to be to keep you engaged in playing. It doesn't need to be as good as the later sections if the game starts off good enough to keep you playing and just gets better over time. If you drop it before you get to the later bits though, then it failed its job. But it still needs to be good, that's the core thing, it needs to be good. It's okay if the later parts are better, but it needs to beat that arbitrary floor for, that a lot of players have to keep playing and to keep that player engaged. And I feel like there's a really good reason that long-form, mainly RPGs, typically have slower beginnings. If a game is going to keep you the player for potentially 50 or even 40 hours to upwards of 100, it needs to set up the world and get you invested as fast as humanly possible so it can focus on reveals and playing out the actual story. It needs to immerse you into that game world, and it needs to do so not necessarily quickly, but correctly. And teach you the main rules as to which it operates, including the story and the gameplay. It needs to introduce you how the game plays, first off. Sure, some games hold on, or just hold off, really, for big features until halfway through. But you need to know how to play the game at its core level to a decentish level before they can really just let go of your hand and let you go otherwise people get overwhelmed and drop the game entirely look at games like poe for instance where they'll just where a lot of players will log in not get a lot of hand holding look at the talent tree and go like oh, you know what not for me i'm out i don't have the time for this a lot of players do that Story-wise, they need to introduce characters, motivations, and settings that will be used for the next 50 plus hours. That takes time, and it takes effort. And what I mean mainly is that it takes time to do it correctly. Because they could just throw all of it in some 
optional tutorials for gameplay and some text to read for story. And like a log or something. But this is video games, and just giving you a bunch of text is not a compelling way to deliver all that build up, and it's not a compelling way to tell a story within the confines of a video game. Most of the time. The game should show you, not tell. Because that is the power of a visual medium. And especially an interactive visual medium. If it can show you and give you motivation to play the game through what you do at the start, then it can more easily grab you and keep you playing to see and experience what happens next. The game needs to lay that groundwork, otherwise the rest of the game has no basis to work off of. The ideal is that the game lays that groundwork without you noticing. And for an example of this, like we do in a lot of my videos where we give an example, Go to Final Fantasy, specifically Final Fantasy VII Remake. Because the first chapter of this game, well, really, the first couple of chapters, are a really interesting case study in the making. Because it needs to establish a few things that are unique to that game. How the game plays, it needs to establish that it's a remake of Final Fantasy VII. And it needs to establish that it is its own entity. And in my opinion, the game nails this setup. The game starts off very, very, very similarly to the original, with a near one-for-one -one recreation of the opening cinematic from the original. You start off playing as Cloud, duh, on the job as a mercenary helping out this rebel group named Avalanche, destroy something called a Mako Reactor. You hop off a train and immediately start fighting, which immediately engages the player, in lieu of giving a long series of cutscenes. The game throws up a few tutorials on how to play the game, and you clobber some jabronis like the Hulk did Loki in the Avengers. You learn how to attack, how to AoE, how magic operates, and how to traverse the game world. While you don't have context as to the overall world, they introduce you to this game's world by going on this sabotage mission. You interact with some lovable characters like Barrett, Jesse, Biggs, and Wedge as you delve deeper into the reactor. You learn that Avalanche's motivations are largely driven on environmental principles and that the extraction of Mako is very harmful to the planet. It makes sense that you are told this since you are a mercenary. You aren't a part of Avalanche, so it makes sense that they need to tell you their motivation because it's as, inf as informing the cloud as it is to the player. It's a subtle thing, but it's way better than a lot of games. I, th I watched Ackman videos over the years, and he's addressed this exact point on a couple of occasions. Where you'll just start a game and they just randomly dump exposition as if it's a normal flow of the conversation. Despite the fact that every character present should already know this information. It feels arbitrary. The, but the way that Final Fantasy VII Remake did it, it makes it feel more natural instead of forced and wedged into the screen just for the player's benefit. After facing off against a few types of enemies, enemy varieties early on as well, yay, you encounter your first boss fight, which is actually pretty well designed. It has a few mechanics and looks visually impressive. You also simultaneously learn how party gameplay works and how characters might synergize off of one another. To avoid further spoilers past this point, the game diverges a bit from the original, showcasing that the remake is going to be truly its own thing, and it's going to be truly a remake. This is a perfect introduction into the game, and showcases a lot of what you need to know as well as introducing you to the world and the motivations of the people that inhabit it. It starts off slow and bite-sized, and, and it gradually expands out of that as you progress into the game, and you become more accustomed to the game and its characters. That's a natural way to handle storytelling. Here's the thing, though. Final Fantasy VII Remake isn't a short game. Well, I guess it can be a in a way if you just rush the main story on easy mode or something, but it's going to run you about 40 hours ordinarily, and it doesn't have a slow start, and it still properly introduces the world. So why do so many other long-form games start off so freaking slow? Well, I think it's a matter of the type of story that is being told. 
Most long form stories need to have fast paced and high adrenaline sections alongside slower, more atmospheric sections. Some games elect to start with the atmospheric areas as a means to introduce the world, while others elect for the fast paced balls to the wall intro to immediately grip the player. The pace is an interesting discussion. Let's go back to Final Fantasy VII Remake because the moment you get back to town after that really amazing intro, the pace slows right on down, nearly to a crawl, as side quests and mini games open up to you. It's not a case of Final Fantasy VII Remake not having a slow start, it just elected to shift things around and have a slower section later on where it can take the time it needs to further develop characters, have some important character interactions and motivations, as well as showing you the people that inhabit the world and their own motivations. If your story is only climactic moments, then each individual moment is lessened since the player gets used to them after a while. It loses that sense of adrenaline. It loses that sense of action. A good game can strike the balance between a variety of play uh, paces, really, to best tell its story and best deliver its gameplay, to constantly mix it up and keep each individual section feeling fresh and new. A game like Xenoblade Chronicles, for instance, starts slow. Yeah, sure, it has an opening battle, but really that only lasts a couple of minutes, and it's mainly just set up and builds up over time till a major event occurs that sets up the rest of the story. It's an interesting aspect of game design, because am I in no way saying all slow starts in games are good, by any means. It's a matter of how they're executed. I think Xenoblade Chronicles is borderline on this issue, for one specific reason. I'm the type of gamer that likes to do all the side quests, and when you get to the starting town of Shulk, a literal metric crapload of quests open up to you, that are essentially just collect quests or standard kill quests that are about as interesting as trying to cut a raw steak in half with with like air conditioning insulation. There's like so many side quests to start this game off. I swear it has more side quests in like the opening section than a lot of other games do in total. And they are mainly just there as a source of XP or to increase affinity rankings for the party members or as a boost for your money. Some kind of, in the loosest definition of that phrase, develop some characters. They kind of do, but they just feel like busy work 99% of the time. But at the same time, they aren't mandatory, so you can skip them. I, however, don't like the idea of dismissing something if it's bad simply because it isn't mandatory. Side quests can and have been done better. And in my opinion, a lot of the side quests in Xenoblade 2, for instance, are better. So at least the series went in the right direction on that front. If you do complete all the side quests that are available, that's a significant amount of time where the story just kind of grinds to a halt, and you aren't really developing the world in any meaningful way. Which really sucks, because the story of Xenoblade Chronicles, from what I've played of it, is really freaking good. For really long-form RPGs, let's move on over to, say, The Witcher 3, because it's an interesting case. What the game elects to do is give you access to a smaller section of the open world and lets you tackle that section like it's a complete open world game. Mobs are low level, there's some secrets and some quests that you can do, and gives you a feel for what the game flow is like later on. And once you beat that section, they shove you through some cutscenes to set up the story for the game and throw you into a massive world and say, hey, have fun. Breath of the Wild did something extremely, if not identically similar with the opening plateau, and I feel that this is a good approach for open world games. Give the player a smaller area to explore like the rest of the world, and just immediately get them engaged with that. And you can set up the story in a little bit after they have explored that area. To give them what essentially amounts to a sample or a demo of the game as a whole. Then you open the world up. This works best for open world games. But not every long-form RPG or long-form game is open-world in the Breath of the Wild sense. Some are more linear or are broken down into smaller sections like Persona. Really what I, 
the whole point of this is. A game needs to shape its opening for the type of game that it is. And regardless if it's a slow start or not, it needs to get the player engaged and keep them engaged throughout the entire experience. If the start of the game can't do that, then it didn't do its job. But if it can do that and push you forward into the other more interesting parts of the game, then in my opinion, it did its job. Maybe not the best it could have, but it was sufficient in what it did. So really, that's all the time I have for today's video. Thank you all for tuning in. My pleasure for making the video. I hope I was able to help jumpstart some of your imaginations on the possibilities that can be done with long-form game intros, and why some games may elect to go for a slower start, while others have a more bombastic start, maybe lean into a slower start later on. Thank you all for tuning in, my pleasure for making the video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like and subscribe if you like the video and you want to see more content. I know I would appreciate it. And comment down below with your opinions, whether there's some of your favorite starts to some of your long, longer form RPG that you have played in your day. I'd be, I would love to read them and find out what games you guys like. Stay safe out there. Have a great day. And as always, I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye, everybody.